Let's go back to that little place where we used to go in the summer days. We dip our feet at the water's edge, and everyone would come along to meet us there. Have a competition to see who can trap for longer. Cause every year my body's getting stronger. We can swim all day and dance until the night. But we're not coming home till the moonlight shines. Till the moonlight shines. Do 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 do. Welcome to A Lovely Yarn, episode something. Doesn't really matter, does it? Today is February 17th. It's a Monday. I am really excited to be back. Um, January was a rough month. I was sick the entire month, plus some of February, and my daughter was as well. She's still on the mend. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that, but it kind of explains my absence. I just was tired, and then I was tired of being sick, so I just really had no motivation. Um, but I, oh, I'm Amber, by the way, and this podcast is about knitting mostly, but also some spinning today. Oh, and I crochet sometimes. Today it's going to be um, just knitting. And um, so I'm really keeping my fingers crossed because I filmed yesterday and um, first of all, I lost my SD card and the last time I'd used it was back when I filmed in November, which was my last podcast. So I, I think I put it somewhere and I remember vaguely thinking, okay, you need to get that soon so that you don't forget that you put it there. So I think it's in my house someplace really strange. Um, so then I tried filming with my phone. My phone's very old and the video I just learned yesterday makes a very annoying staticky sound. So then I got my daughter's iPad and filmed it and went and uploaded it to my computer and went to edit it. And lo and behold, you could hardly hear me. So today I'm using the iPad plus my microphone, which is what I normally use when I podcast. So I'm really hoping, I did sound checks, which I did yesterday too, keeping my fingers crossed. Anyway, I don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm probably going to have to split this up. I have to leave here in a little bit to take my son to um, a Bible study, but I wanted to go ahead and hop on and at least get started because, gosh, it's been a really long time. It's been, I think it's been over two months now. So, um... I'm just going to hop right in there and get to it. Um, I even took a little break from Facebook and Instagram. I just was, I think what happened was because I was sick for so long and I just had a, a rough, like late fall, early winter, um, just some things uh, just were really rough and I was kind of struggling a bit and I just needed to get off of social media and just really remove all the extra voices. Um, you know, my faith is really important to me right up front. I'm going to tell you that. So sometimes when you're getting all these extra voices and you're seeing all this, uh, horrible, hard, sad stuff in the world, when you're already feeling a little bit down, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily a good thing for you at that moment. So, uh, that's why I took a social media break and it was good. I, um, I just needed to quiet the voices so I could hear and focus on God. Um, and now I'm back. So yeah. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you here. I, when I was sick, I really didn't have a lot of, um, like energy physically and then also mentally. So I didn't, I did some knitting, but it was all pretty basic knitting. But, um, one thing that I did want to do and I actually accomplished was I wanted to make some dishcloths for my mother-in-law because she had made a comment. Um, over Christmas time that she needed new ones and I've, I've made them for her in the past and so I thought well that's a really easy thing to do it requires pretty much no thinking on my part and I use grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern I will link it below with everything else I talk about as well as where like my Instagram name and Ravelry name and stuff too but 
So I had, I, my goal was to just use cotton stash that I had already because I knew I had a, a pretty substantial amount. I didn't want to have to go out and buy more. Uh, I'm trying to work through my stash. I've been doing that for the last couple of years and it always feels really good. So I wanted to use what I had. So I'm going to show you what I, what I made. So I made 10 dishcloths and, um, yeah, mo some of them like here, these two, um, this, this one, it's just, I just used one skein of yarn. I had like whole skeins and then other ones I had half skeins. So like this one, I did half and half. Or if I didn't, um, I don't know if I wanted to change things up a little bit, I got a little bit more fun and like I did this and I just did every two rows and then I switched and I carried the yarn up the side so that I wasn't, you know, you're not going to weave in all those ends, but you know, there's no need for that. Um, so yeah, I did that with that one and this one, I think this one too carried like a cream color with it. And then for some reason, I don't know why this one reminds me of an Oreo cookie. No one else in my family thinks so, but I don't know. It, it's the brown and it's the brown and the off white. That's what it is. So yeah, I just, I made 10 of them. That was my goal. I wanted to make her 10. And then she also made a comment that she needed some more coasters because my mother-in-law likes to change up her living room decor quite often. And so I made her a bunch in the past, but um, none of them match her decor now, her color scheme. So she wanted that. And her color scheme is, she has a lot of grays. So I didn't have, in the past I've always made my coasters out of the, like the cotton yarn, but I don't have any gray cotton yarn, but I do have gray wool blend yarn, so I'm just going to do that. It's for a coaster, so I think it will be fine. So yes, that, that was my big January project. I really like this one. I think it's because it's been so gray here. And I love the brightness of that. I almost wanted to keep that one for myself, but I thought, nope, I'm just going to give that to her. And I worked through quite a bit of my cotton stash, so that was a really good thing. Um, let me... I have my notes. Because it's been so long, I want to make sure that I get everything that I wanted to get. Okay, so all of my finished objects are actually gift knits. So that, that those are going to be for my mother-in-law, and I'm pretty certain and hopeful that she doesn't watch my podcast. So, because it's, I mean, her birthday is the end of next month. But um, that'd be a bummer if she happened to watch. I don't think she does, though. The next, the next um, gift knit I have, next finished object, were these socks. Are these socks. These were for my daughter. Her 14th birthday was a couple of weeks ago. And so I actually started these, I think I may have started these um, right after Christmas. This is Knit Picks Felici, and I, I think this might be called the Bubblegum colorway, but I'm going to have to link that below. I need to look it up because I'm pretty sure I threw the, the ball band away, and um, I'll just look it up on their website and see if I can find the color. But... Okay, so I placed a fairly large knit pits, knit pits. <laughs> see what happens when you're trying to go fast? Knit picks order back in, I think it was November. It was when they were having their big sell. And I ordered a lot of the um, pellet, their, their pellet, which is a fingering weight. I don't know if I showed you guys that. I have a huge basket of it. I got some of the skeins for like $1.99 a piece, and um, I just thought that would be nice to have on hand. Anyway, I, and then I also ordered some sock yarn, um, and they sent me this, this yarn, as a free gift. Now, this is only the second time I've knitted with the Felici. The other, the other pair of socks I knitted uh, um, were the ones I made for my son, which I talked about on a previous podcast. And he has not worn his as much. My daughter, I just gave these to her. Like, she probably wore these four times. And I think you can probably see all the pilling, which is a disappointment. 
Somebody had told me that because when I had when I had posted about knitting with the Felici, someone had said it's a really soft yarn and it's not very durable. And I would have to agree with them because look, they've been washed once and she just wore them around the house. I don't even think she wore them out in her boots. So that's pretty bad for, you know. So as much as I like the self-striping, I don't think I'll be buying the Felici. Um, unless it just like, this is the worst it gets. I don't know, we'll see, time will tell. So they sent me two balls of it because to make two pairs of socks, you need two skeins. And they sent me two skeins and they were from the same dye lot, but I don't know if you can notice, you might not be able to, cause I, try, I, I, I tried to mess around with the two skeins. But one of the skeins was significantly more bright than the other. Let me see if I can find an example. The camera may not pick this up. Like this, this yellow is more, this is a more pastel, this is a more bright, and it was like that for all of the colors. So what I ended up doing, which was only slightly inconvenient, um, I like the idea of knitting from two, making identical socks from two different skeins of yarn because then um, you, I don't know, you don't have, you only have your end at the beginning. You only have your yarn tail at the be beginning and the end to weave in. But what I had to do with these is I had to alternate skeins on each sock, trying to just blend in the pastel with the bright, because if not, I would have had one really bright sock and one really pastel sock. And that probably would have bothered me. So um, it might, maybe it wouldn't have bothered anybody else, but it kind of bothered me. But I just thought that was really weird because it's uh, same lot, you know, but for some reason, even though it was the same lot, they were different. They were different. So, so all I did for this is I cast on 60 stitches, did a two by two ribbing for, I think, 15 rows, and then just knit down and I did a modified, I have partridge heel and then just the, my regular toe decrease and Kitchener stitch it shut. That is basically what I do. Normally when I knit socks for myself, I do 64 stitches, but um, my daughter's feet are a little bit smaller and her, so even, not even just her feet, but um, like pulling them up on. I've noticed some other socks I've made with a six, 64 stitch count for her, for her kind of slide down a little bit. And honestly, I could probably get away with a 60 stitch count too on most sock yarns. But these are Lily's 14th birthday socks. Those were done. I actually, I started them and then, um, I must've started them right after Christmas because I was doing really good. I got one sock completely done, started on the second and then I got sick. Oh, and I made a prayer shawl. So I do have one finished object that I don't have with me. It was a prayer shawl. I made the hipster shawl by Pohi Locatelli and, um, I made that in a, it was Lion Brand, I think hometown. I put a picture of it my, on my Instagram account, but I did not get like a full picture of it. And I literally finished it. So the people that I was making it for, I was making it for them to take to their daughter-in-law. And I literally finished it like hours before I had to get it to them. Not even hours, like 30 minutes. So, and it was night. So I had, I didn't have good lighting to take pictures. So I just didn't. Um, but so that, so when I started making that, I had about two weeks to make that. So I was really focused on that. Plus I wasn't feeling well. So it was just, yeah, I finished Lily's, all that to say, I finished Lily's second sock the day before her birthday. Um, but I was feeling so proud of myself because, you know, it was Jan here we come the beginning of January and I had one sock completely done and her birthday wasn't until February, but it's okay. All right. The next, my last finished object was also another gift I made. And this pattern, I talked about this book before. It's the Coffee House Knits book. I love it. I highly recommend it. I This is one of those books that I actually, there's multiple patterns in it that I would make, which does not happen very frequently. I have lots of knitting books and crochet books, but um, I don't buy them as much anymore. And when I do buy them, I make sure that I'm going to, they're going to be worth my, my money because um, what's the sense of having a book if you're only going to make one pattern on it? You can probably buy that pattern on Ravelry. 
And just so you guys know, Ravelry has a really nice function. If you want to look at all the patterns inside a book, you can put that book's name in on the Ravelry search and pick the option of search for like a book and it'll bring up that book. And then at the top, there's a little tab that says Pat all patterns or patterns and you can actually see the patterns that are in the book. I now the only time I've had problems with that is like older knit knit books. Um, I don't know that I don't know that all books are on there, but I think you know, especially your more popular ones, you can probably find on there. And that's really nice because even if you look on Amazon, you can kind of like look inside the book a little bit, but even that's very limited as to like how many how how much you can actually see of the book. So just so you guys know, that is um, a really helpful function. So I made for my mom the chai latte cowl. Okay, there it is. And this pattern is by Lori Wagner. And let me show you mine. Now I gave this to her, um, so she's been wearing it, so that's why it's a little rumpled looking. So there, it, you can wear it like that. Okay, with the V going up this way, or if you turn it upside down, you have the stockinette. See, it's let me show you just so you can get an idea. Okay, and I knit this in Melabrigo Rios in the whole grain colorway. It took you have to buy two skeins. I had this left. I love Melabrigo Rios. I have used it multiple times. It is such a nice, soft, squishy yarn. And it's really, in my opinion, it's really good for gift knitting because first of all, it's it's 100% merino. So, hold on one second. Okay, I'll be on five minutes. My son's ready to leave. Um, I am not gonna edit that out because I don't have the time. I'm trying to do this all in one swoop. Anyway, it's life, right? It's real life, guys. We all have, we all have interruptions in our life, don't we? Um, and my son's on interruption. I just need to talk, get this little thing over with here with this cow, and I'll finish when I get home. But anyway, um, the reason I like Melabrigo Rios for a, for gift knitting is because it is soft. It's not. I feel like even people like my daughter who's very wool sensitive. She can wear this fine. It doesn't, it, it's not itchy at all for her. And also it's super wash. So, you know, when I give somebody something that's knitted, I, unless, like, I don't typically give something that has to be hand washed because not everybody wants to spend time hand washing things. So that's why I really like, one of the reasons I really like the Melabrigo Rios. But this was a really fun cowl to knit and I'll just slip it on real quick so you can see how it lays. I love it because um, I did go down a needle size. So I went down to size six needles. I think the pattern called for seven. And in the picture, it kind of looked like it was hanging loosely on the model's neck. And when I wear a cowl, I want it to stay up around my neck. Like I want it to be t a little tighter, but not suffocatingly tight. But you can see this is still nice and loose, but it stays up on my neck. So it's going to block the wind because that's why I, I wear a cowl. I want, I mean, Usually when I wear a cowl, it's for practical reasons. It's because I want to keep my neck warm. So I did go down to uh, whatever the pattern calls for, which I believe is a seven. I went down a size smaller. So I'm pretty sure I knitted this in a six. So yeah, I'm going to take a break now and take my son to the church. And then I will continue when I get back. Back. Um, ran my son up to the church. And now I've got about 15 minutes to get the rest of this podcast in before my mom comes up. We're going to do a little workout video together. This this has been a very busy day. Um, I was gone most of the morning, came home, did some stuff with the kids for school. <sighs> Had to take Ian, my mom's coming up, trying to film the podcast, and then my kids have their youth group all evening tonight, so it's just one of those busy kind of days for us. Um, anyway, yeah, so I was telling you about this, right? About the chai latte cow. So that is done, and um, that's all for my finished objects. So let's move on to my works in progress. So the first thing I want to show you are a pair of socks that I'm knitting. 
But before I show you the socks, I want to show you. Um, so this is another pair. The the ones I'm currently knitting are the um, the perfect, the regia, regia. I don't know how that's pronounced. Perfect. Okay. Um, I had made a pair for Christmas of the. This is that perfect yarn. Okay. Um, so I I really like this yarn a lot. It's really fun because you get one skein. You pull from the middle. It has like these yellow leader. Um, parts of your yarn so you know when to start the sock and when to stop it. Um, and, and honestly, that's all on the inside of the label. Okay, so you can find the instructions on that. But then you get two perfectly paired socks. Um, so this this was my pair for Christmas. And I, I think I, on my last podcast, I was working on these. I had got maybe, I don't know, it's been so long I forget, but I, I know I posted about it. So if you want the information on this particular yarn, you can go back to my last podcast and I have the link for this, like this color. Um, I know you probably don't want Christmas sock yarn right now, but maybe for next year. All right. So, so that's a pair fit. This pair I'm working on now Here's the first one. Isn't that a fun, fun bright colors? Great for gray days, right? I just need to start the toe decrease. Actually, I think I already started it. So I need to finish this, finish the toe. And then um, we went somewhere and I just wanted some, some round knitting, you know, in the round knitting. So what I ended up doing, because I was so close to being done with that, is I just pulled the rest out for this sock, set it to the side, and started the second one. And this is how much I have on the second one. And I, I knit all my socks on 9-inch circulars. The only time I don't have to use the 9-inch circular, or the only time I can't use it, is down on the toe. I use it on the heel and everything. I know some people have had a hard time with that, but I, I don't know. I just... That's how I started doing it, so I, it feels, it's maybe slightly awkward, but I guess I'm probably just used to it now. So yes, so I'm on the second, and I, I don't know if this tells you how many to cast on. Um, no. I cast on 64, and that's the, that's the same I did for the Christmas socks. And the thing I like about this is it gives you a really nice long leg. Look at that. I normally don't knit my leg that long, only because I get bored. <laughs> That's the only reason. I like a long leg on my sock. But because you are because you just follow the yarn, you have no choice but to knit it the length that it's supposed to be. And so I, ha I will say that this ribbing, this 2x2 two two ribbing, does get a bit boring because that's, that's an awful lot of ribbing. I mean, that's definitely, I usually do like 15 rounds of ribbing. I don't know how many this is because you don't have to count because you just keep going until the, the solid stops. And when you start with the striping, then you just start knitting in the round. Um, and then and then you knit in the round till you get to the solid again, and then you do your heel. And then it just, and see, you just have a little bit of solid, thicker solid here. But anyway, yeah, it's, I love this Perfect yarn. And I also love how durable and sturdy this yarn is. I, I know this is going to be like a really good, um, durable wearing sock, which I really appreciate in socks. I was disappointed because I pulled out a pair of my non-superwash, 100% wool hand-knit socks to wear over the weekend or last week sometime, and I, um, I noticed they had a pretty decent sized hole in the heel. And I hadn't even worn those socks very much, so... I have two pairs of socks that are in nylon free yarn and I just have to say that I don't think I will make more. I think I'm just going to stick to the nylon to have it making socks with the, the yarn that has the wool and the nylon because I, if I'm going to invest time and money in making a pair of socks, I want them to last. So that was a really big disappointment. I'll darn them, but I have a feeling, um, if it, if a hole developed that quickly, it's going to happen in other places, you know, so, so that's why I appreciate a more durable, sturdy yarn, which a lot of these commercial yarns are. 
I'm going to post down in the description box the shop on Etsy that I bought this from. She has so many good commercial yarns like this um, and like the self-striping and those fun kind of sock yarns that and her prices are really affordable. I think she's based out of either, I think it's out of Wisconsin or Minnesota. And I feel like her shop, her shipping is so fast. Like I'll order and I'll have it within two to three days. No kidding. It's crazy. And I'm in Western Pennsylvania. So yeah. All right. And then the other project, this is going to be another bright one. If you guys have viewed my podcast for a while, you probably know that I'm usually drawn to more subdued neutral colors but I will say in the winter because we have a lot a lot of gray days like the majority of our days in the winter and even in the fall maybe even the spring we just have a lot of really gray overcast days here in western Pennsylvania and because I love the sun so much that's really hard on me mentally but um I do I have noticed within the last several years that I do crave color so in the summer, I'm more likely to knit with the more neutral colors, more natural, more earth tones. In the winter, I'm more drawn to colors like this. This is by Yarn Cafe Creations. This is her, um, it's, a, it's a worsted, the worsted base, and it's in the colorway Yeti. So I bought this, I think it was beginning of the month, maybe the end of December, I can't remember. I am making a pattern called the Snow Slide Hat by Gabrielle Knits. You're not going to be able to really see, but it's, um, so it's got a folded up brim and this is a cable. It's a cabled hat. I wanted a warmer, I have some knit hats, but I wanted something that would be a little bit warmer. And instead of just folding the brim up, I'm going to actually um, knit this a bit more, do the ribbing a bit more. And then I'm, I looked it up on YouTube. I know you can do this using a provisional cast on, but I didn't want to mess with that. I just wanted to get started. So I saw where you can actually knit however long you want it and then fold it up in, like fold your cast up edge up in. And then, so you get your nice rolled edge there. And then you actually um, knit your cast on bumps with your live stitches. And I'll link that Facebook, or I'm sorry, this is what happens when I'm in a hurry. My brain is going, you know, and I'm trying to remember everything, but I will, I'll try to remember. I don't have it written down in my little book. So, but I'll try to remember to link that, that video tutorial on YouTube that I used for this. So I still have, I probably am going to make the brim like that, that uh, long because I want it to cover my ears. But isn't that a fun color? I think that's a really fun color. And I'm doing this in 88 stitches. So I'm doing the middle size. And that is a free pattern on Ravelry, by the way. Don't you love free patterns? I appreciate when designers put out free patterns. I don't mind paying for patterns, but I do appreciate a free pattern too. So yes, um, Oh, and when I did that, when I did the cast on, I did use, um, I went up a needle size because I want, I didn't want it to be too tight up here on my head. You know what I mean? So I did a, I cast on in a size seven and then I did the ribbing in a size six. And, um, and then I'm going to go up a needle size for the actual cabling because I feel like I have a tendency to cable a little bit tighter. And so I want to make sure it actually will stay on my head and not pop off. So that's my second work in progress. And then I have one more. And I actually, um, this has been, <laughs> I found this work, I found this project in my room in January. Like I said, I wasn't feeling well. So I just went down into my, my little room, my crafty room, whatever, one day. And I thought I'm going to organize, I'm just going to sit on the floor, organize my patterns, put them into binders, which I already had that done. But, you know, I print out patterns. I had a stack probably like that high of patterns that needed organized, sorted through and put into the binders. I like to just organize by, well, I have a couple for crochet. I have a couple for knit. And then inside each binder, I have like little subtitles like sweaters, shawls, hats, gloves, socks, you know, like I like it organized like that. While I was down there, 
I came upon this project bag. I don't remember where I got this project bag. And there's no tag on it. I think somebody might have sent this as a gift. I, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, inside the project bag, I found a pair, not a pair, I found one of these Simple House slippers. This is by Temple of Knit. You can see it. Okay. So, one slipper. And this is how you wear it on your foot. Like that. I've made a lot of these slippers. They're, I really like them. I think they, they fit really great and they make great gifts. I've I've actually never made a pair for myself. I've made them for my daughter, my sister, um, my friends. Like they're just, they're very quick. They're made with worsted. I don't know if the pattern calls for worsted weight, but I make them with worsted weight. I think it's very flexible. I think you can do whatever. You can kind of play around with it. I thought it would be really fun to hold like three fingering weights together and do a marled effect. I'd really like to do that. And then it would have nylon in it, which would make it even more durable. This is just, this yarn here is called gray. The color is gray marble and it's a Lion Brand Vanish Choice yarn. Um, so I'm not sure how it'll wear. But you knit this portion flat. So I have the second one started. So this garter ridge portion, you knit flat. And then you join in the round and then you knit this, decrease your toe and you seam up the back. So, halfway done. I just need to finish this other one. So that is my third work in progress to finish up. And now real quick, because I see I have five minutes before my mom gets here. Can I get this done? I just want to talk to you about um, some future cast-ons. I have two that I want to cast on. I actually already have the yarn caked up and everything. The first one is a scarf for my son. And let me grab it here. I have the pattern printed. I always print my patterns out unless it's like a really simple pattern. So this is the Sea and Sky by Robbie Laughlin. Okay, it's got the nice fringe on the end. And it's done in fingering weight. So I'm going to use this really pretty green. Um, this is by Ashley of Old Wire Road Fiber Co. I always have to think. She used to be the Blackberry Ridge, so I always have to think of her new name, even though it's been a while since that's her name changed. This colorway is Play That Funky Music, and this color looks awesome with my son's skin tone and hair. So he likes to wear scarves with his jacket, so I'm going to make him a, that scarf using this. I just need to find a size 5 needle. I know, like I have one that I'm using for something, but I'm pretty sure I should have another one. It's just gone MIA. Does anybody else lose needles? So that's my, I'm going to be casting that on as soon as I cast off some or bind off on something. And then the others, the second one I'm doing is from this book, Home and Away. This is another really great knit book that there's multiple projects in here that I'd actually make. And this one is something I've been meaning to knit for actually probably a good year. It's the Georgetown card again by Hannah Fettig. The whole book's by Hannah Fettig. But there, there you have it right there. And I'll show you, see if I can find a picture of the front. It's got like the uh, fold folded over, what's that called? Like shawl collar. So I do not have a gray hand knit cardigan. I have a gray cardigan, but it's very lightweight. And it was one that I had bought at a secondhand store. And I do wear it a lot, just not this time of year because it's not warm enough. So I've been wanting just a very practical, simple, basic, classic gray cardigan that's nice and warm and cozy. So that's what I'm going to make. I'm using Cascade 220 Heathers. And this, I think, the tag does not have a color name. It just has the number, which I will put down below in the description in case you're interested. But it's just like, it's just a gray, just a nice classic gray color. And this sweater comes in either a, you can knit it in the round, like a one piece, not in the round, is one piece, 
or you can do it in a seam, the seamed version. I'm going to do the seamed version because when I've knit cardigans in the past, I've always knit them in one piece and they don't always stay up the greatest on my shoulders. In fact, I had one cardigan, I think it was a tin can knit. It was the Harvest cardigan. It was, it was my very first, I think it was the very first sweater I had ever made. Um, I had to actually rip it out because it sat in my drawer for two, maybe three years and I never wore it because it would just fall off my shoulders. And I thought this is stupid to have a sweater I'm not gonna wear. So I've heard that by seaming things, seaming sweaters, seaming cardigans, that sometimes allows for a better fit. So I'm hoping that is true. And I know Emily from Quiet Happiness Knits, I think is her new name. She used to be the Goldberry Artisans. She knit this sweater, I think in the same exact yarn, and she did the seamed version. And she said it, it really fits her well. It stays up and everything. So that's what I'm hoping for me as well. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up, but before I go, I just want to mention a podcast that I just recently found, and by recently, I mean yesterday morning. Um, it's called The Quiet Corner, a knitting and spinning podcast. I, I don't remember the podcaster's name. I will link her information below. She is C Salt and Stone on Instagram, and she only has one episode of her podcast out, but I just loved it. It's a very calm... She just, it's just a very calm, I, I just like her aesthetics and I like her projects and she's just, just very calm. She's just, I really enjoyed it. Um, but I will link her information below. Go check her out and give her some love. And that's it friends. I'm going to wrap this up because I'm so glad to be back in podcasting, but I have a busy day today. So thank you so much for coming and watching. And if you enjoyed it, I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and give me, or go ahead and subscribe to my channel and have a great have a great day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you.